What I've found with clients as well is if you, if they slowly, I find that they just don't want to eat them anymore. Like they naturally, they start to just not have them in their diet. And if they really want them, just cook them well, serve them with butter, make sure you're having other carbohydrates with them. So fruits or root vegetables, protein. Um, and they seem to gradually, like the only thing that I sometimes like is like, oh, like I love Indian food, like curries. Like the, and like, I quite like the spinach curry with the cheese. It's like really well cooked spinach. I quite like, but obviously there's got heaps of spices and cheese and other stuff in there. Like just straight spinach is pretty yeah, gr- far. Greens are good if they, they're lathered in like mm. dressing, you know, mm. I mean, mm. or cheese or cooked well or have a sauce on it, you know, because mm. people are always like, I love kale. I'm like, do you, do you, you love really. just eating that piece of raw kale? They're like, no, I cook it with some fat and I cook it with salt. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, but you're not, yeah. you don't love kale. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you, like, you, you know, I, I often, like, I think about, like, our ancestors, how would they have known what to eat? Like, what was poisonous? What was not poisonous? Like, taste would have guided them. So, you know, like, do you think they would have been running around eating plates and plates of leaf, leafy greens? Because one, there's no energy in them, right? Like they right. would have foraged and found all these leafy greens and eaten them and it would have sustained them for about fucking one hour. But it's like <laughs> they wouldn't have found fruit and gone, oh, geez, you know, I better not eat this fruit. It's really high in fructose. It's just, it doesn't like, if you just like, what do you desire? You desire sweet and saltness. So it's like, use your brain. You know, of course, like don't go and bite into the next donut that's cooked in vegetable oil. Um, but fruit, like people are just so scared of fruit, salt. We desire salt. We desire sweetness. We don't desire to munch down on green vegetables. Well, when we start to do and listen to what our systems are telling us in the natural state versus mm. what we've read that has conditioned our brain into thinking mm. what is the right thing for us, because I do believe, you know, when you're bombarded so much by the health industry that this good, you know, this drink is good. And then you see people that are fit and look good and they are sipping on all these really green drinks and so Mm. forth. Then you condition your brain and your mind to think that that is the right thing. And Mm. so that's what you consume. And I think there is something to say for that. When you think you're consuming something good for you, it's probably not as bad for you as it might be, you know, Mm. but it, it, and it's the same thing if you're consuming something that you think is bad for you that is possibly good for you. You know, if you're consuming mm. a Coca-Cola and you're like, oh my God, this is going to give me diabetes, which it's not, then you, you create this effect within your system. And because the culture of today's world is very much about these things are good, green vegetables, green vegetables, green vegetables, eat more greens, mm. then you're conditioned and think that that's the route to go without really understanding, do I really like these? Do I really want these? Are they you know, mm. what do I need to sustain my energy? What do I need? You know, what is it than how my body works right? And most people, mm. I don't think, understand that. And they continue to go down these paths of health that aren't really healthy. Mm. I think too, you know, because like people, like we were just talking about this before, like you get a lot of comments, like they just get really aggravated that you're saying, you know, like, not don't eat green vegetables. So I think I still sometimes will eat them. Like if we, like as if they're part of a dish that's, a, you know, like I'll get a Thai green curry and it has green beans in it. Like, of course, I'm not going to pick the bloody green beans out because they taste nice as part of that dish. But I don't go out of my way now to buy plates of like, or eat plates of broccoli and add them to every meal. It's like, look at the, you know, my system because I have good digestion. It, I can eat them and it's no problem, you know. Right. Um, but I think you're right. Like people, you need to look at the individual and look at their symptoms. You know, if you've got really bad digestive issues and like, you know, metabolic, you've been doing all the dumb diets for years and years and years, it, you can see greater improvements by initially taking those things out, letting your intestines heal. And then, you know, once you're better, you can start to add them back in if you want to. Exactly. You know, or I mean, you, like I said, do it works for you. If, you, if your mind is so set on, I love my broccoli, you know, or mm. whatever it is. I'm like, okay, you know, continue to do that. And if you can make all the other changes and still mm. have that, well, we'll end up usually showing up is every time you eat broccoli, you're going to have some digestive distress, mm. you know? So, I mean, again, you have to always do what is comfortable for you. And I mean, literally, and I've worked with people that are freaked out about not having their greens. And I'm like, okay, let's not create a lot of stress around it. Let's have them and do some other shifts and then go along this path and then see mm. how you eventually do. But ultimately, 
you know, people are always inclined to do what you want. I mean, I'm not here to force you to do anything that doesn't mm. go right to you. However, let me just tell you what this vegetable does to you. You know, what's the pluses and what's the minuses. And then you can decide based on your experience, if you really want to eat that still. I think too, like you need to be honest with yourself and you know, if you like so set on eating green vegetables all week and eating clean, and then you get to the weekend and you're smashing, you know, ice cream and biscuits and all this other crap and you're binge eating. It's like, well, there's not, something's not right. You know, it's, it's like, like you took the broccoli out. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you just, you, you know, I think test and measure and find what's optimal. And if it's something's not working, doing the same thing over and over again, is not going to get you there. And I think, you know, when I sort of, change the way that I did things and viewed nutrition. I was, I, I just knew instinctively, I was like, well, I keep doing this same shit over and over again and I keep getting the same result. So like, right. obviously something's not working, you know, just because the rest of the mainstream says that you should do this. Um, you know, it's like, but now I sleep well and I feel good. My period's normal and I'm lean and I can still eat like a decent amount of food and I only have to train three days a week and I look good. I'm like, well, you can have your fucking green vegetables. Like the fitness yeah. models can keep their green smoothies and their digestive issues and their menstrual cycle issues and their binge eating and, you know. Sure. And, you know, and again, we always have to look, you know, it, to, to the people that are eating it. Some people that eat lots of green vegetables, you know, maybe their stress load is extremely low. Mm. So maybe they can handle them better. I mean, so you know, where everybody's like, well, so-and-so does it. Well, so-and-so does it. And she lives this and look at her. She looks really good. And she eats all that. I'm like, well, what else is she doing though? I but mean, also too, it's like, know, just cause they look good. It doesn't mean that it's good because Absolutely. I'm like, I know a heap of women, like this one lady and I love her and she's awesome. And she eats no sugar. Like she's tiny, she's thin, but I'm like, you eat fuck all. Like you, you know, it's like, I don't want to live like that. Right. <laughs> and again, to each their own, whatever works for you. But ultimately, you know, people need to be more aware of literally what foods do because there's pluses and minuses to every mm. food out there. It's not mm. all good, right? And depending on how you eat it and, and the health of your system is going to find out how well that food worked for you. And that's why, mm. and again, if you go eat a big salad and it's causing all this digestive upset and, you know, you're, but, yeah, but I got all this nutrition in. And I'm like, but did you? You did. You know, people you probably didn't. didn't. Right. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. You know, and because green vegetables, you know, they also do have the polyunsaturated fats and they're not super high amounts, but enough to cause digestive upsets and mm. enough to cause, you know, a, a, a problem with, you know, if you eat them with protein, some inhibition with how you break down proteins. Mm. So you have to like take everything into consideration, you know, and, and, and then understand again, and always ask yourself, but is this really good for me? How is my body doing? How is my digestion? Am I seeing all these foods in my stool? And mm -hmm. if you are, how much do you think that your body is able to get what it needs out of it? Can't even break it down. Do you know what's funny too? It's like since, because in my diet, I have very little fiber, really. Like I drink pulp-free orange juice. Uh, I'll eat whole fruit. Um, Straw carrot salad. I know you do that. Yeah, no, no salad, like carrot, the carrot salad carrot yeah. salad that's probably yeah. it really white potatoes and it's like and this is too much information but every day great big poo like nice and like it comes out easy no and pushing. here's a picture no it's good yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's so the women it like it's this is another bit of an overshare too but like because we talk about poo and we talk about periods and whatever else and you know i'll get messages all the time just going oh just it's just so good to have poo every day kitty you know, and once they start to it take is. all, and you know, I think if you are constipated, like some little things that we've helped people implement, like the mushrooms, do the cooked mushrooms, do the carrot salad, bamboo shoots, another good one, you know, cook them. Then we get them to blend them up and get to have a couple of tablespoons in between each meal. And sometimes for people that that'll really get them, you know, um, and can you maybe quickly before we finish talk about, cause you do need fiber, but like, what's the difference between carrots, mushrooms and bamboo shoots versus like green vegetables and psyllium husks and that type, like fiber, like why is one, anyway, I'll let you, let you explain. Well, I mean, we use those fibers and, you know, something, okay, we'll use the raw carrot. I mean, mm. it's a below ground vegetable. So mm. it has different properties than the above ground vegetables. Above ground are more susceptible for the ants and bugs and things. So they don't have all these internal toxins like the leaves do. And the carrot itself is actually, you know, because it's below ground, it can act as like this antifungal 
you know, as they refer to it as nature's antibiotic, if you add a little bit of coconut oil and vinegar and it just cleanses out the, the gut area. The same with mushrooms and bamboo. It has these properties that basically don't feed the bacteria in your gut, but more pull it through. I always like to think of it, use it, think of it as this Brillo pad going yeah. through the gut and just kind of scraping it and cleaning it and helping it pull everything else out of you. Mm. It's, it's um, and if you ever noticed too, you put a carrot in the fridge, it never goes moldy. It That's just right. shrivels, it just shrivels up. Yeah. So, Same thing with potatoes. You know, the, the below ground roots don't do that. You know, mm. your leaves after what, three or four days, they start getting stinky and wet, mm. disgusting, mm. smell horrible. Yeah, your carrots, your your potatoes, they don't even need to really be refrigerated if you put them in a cool environment, but they don't they don't do that. Um, and some salads like and you might be able to talk about some salads that you like. Like I still will eat salad, but what I put in mine is I'll put like cooked beetroot. I really like cooked beetroot. I'll use cucumber, tomatoes, um, I love olives, I'll have feta in there, you know, make like a Greek salad, carrots, red capsicum. Um, you know, sometimes I'll like to have it as a side dish to yep some steak or whatever I'm having with potato. What sort of salads do you, I'll put a bit of olive oil sometimes on there, lemon juice, vinegar. So literally because it's hot here in San Diego and I know mm. you guys are freezing your butts off over there, but <laughs> we're having extreme heat warnings here. Um, so I hate cooking everything. It's too hot. Mm. Um, so I'm all about tomato, cucumber, onion mm. with mm. sliced bots, mozzarella cheese yum. in there little balsamic vinaigrette and then I put parmesan cheese on top of that oh, yum. and that is just like my go-to like midday salad now you know yeah. that I consume because it's cool and yeah. I don't have all that roughage you know and then I usually consume it either with a glass of milk or a glass of juice depending on what kind of protein I got from it yeah but it's it's delicious yeah so it's like still have your salads I think but just you don't need to throw like I used to throw just shitloads of raw spinach and I'd actually cut up raw broccoli whereas now I just leave those things out and just put yeah that sort of stuff in but um yeah. I you still have it it's just a different definition and a different way to do it and you know and again and if you want to have a big green salad once in a while because you love it and you that's what you enjoy then have that you know just don't have it twice a day or mm continuing or thinking you're eating it because this is what my body needs and I want something healthy for me. Mm. No, I mean, do it because you love it. You know, mm. that's the only reason you should do it. Oh, well, that, thanks so much, Kate. I'm actually, I know I need to let you go because you've got um, some clients and I'm actually going to go now and have my, uh, my daily carrot salad. And um, yeah, thanks so early much. There. You have it. You're an early carrot salad eater. Yeah, I just sort of do it in the morning, like in my, now I've got a bit of a break before I have to make clients, so I'll have it now and then I'll have a morning tea and, you know, like to, I like to stick to the routine. I understand. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Um, and Always a pleasure. I will see you next week. Yeah, I'll try to send you some of this warm weather. So oh, yes, please. Can, I'm sick of the little, cold. Little, I just want the yeah. sun to come. <laughs> I'm telling you, come over here, you're going to be hot. So it's all good. I love the hot. Give me all the sun. <laughs> uh, well, have a good day right. and I'll talk to you next week. Bye. You got it.